I'm at a park today. You know, you ever go to a park and there's kids running around screaming and having a good time? One of the things I notice about kids is that they don't worry about their decisions. They just go for it. And sometimes, uh, as people, you know, who are older, I think we get really concerned about making the wrong decision. Do you ever get concerned about making the wrong decision? Do you, does that lead you to overthinking every single thing you do? You know what I mean? Like, hey, do you want to go here or there? Um, I don't know. Well, what about this and what about that? And your mind just goes through all these uh, elaborate scenarios. And let alone if it's an important decision like, you know, what job you should take or, you know, what you should say to your friend or your spouse or whatever. So your mind just takes over and you run all these scenarios. And one of the reasons why we run scenarios is because we're trying to avoid a mistake. Okay? I want you to show me someone who's never made a mistake. <laughs> That's all of us. So the fear of making a mistake usually comes from my perspective. When you've been in a relationship where you've been undermined, you've been told you're the problem, you've been, you know, harmed in some way. So what we do when we have that overthinking is we're trying to figure it out so we can make, make uh, no mistakes. So one of the things I really encourage people to do is to, I say this, trust your gut, not your mind. When you're in a difficult relationship, you're abused, you're abandoned, you're hurt, one of the first things that you learn to do is suppress your instincts, suppress your spirit, your gut, whatever you want to call it. And so when you start suppressing that, what you're doing is suppressing the very information that might lead you to the good decision. So your, your gut, your instincts, your spirit will give you information that you cannot prove. But when you're in a difficult relationship or an abusive relationship, you gotta prove everything. And even in like religious circles, church circles, you have to prove everything with a Bible verse. So you trusting your gut is difficult because your gut will give you information that you can't prove. And then you just have to go with it with no guarantees. And the overthinking is about trying to get some sort of guarantee, which when we're honest, none of us have. So one of the things I want to encourage you to do is to, to try to trust your instincts, your gut, your spirit, one time out of the 10 opportunities or the 100 opportunities you get today. Just one time. So it kind of goes like this. You're in a conversation with somebody and that little instinct, that inspiration comes up and you're like, oh, I want to say that. And then your mind goes, oh, no, you don't say that. They'll think you're stupid. Oh, no, you can't do that. They won't understand. And then you shut down and you don't do it. What if you just took one, uh, one risk out of 10 and then see how that, where that goes and what that leads you to, okay? I just want you to experiment that because if you stay in your mind, you're going to live in the, in the paralysis through analysis. So I would encourage you to take that risk with your gut.